Hey folks, this is Sanjeev from uh, VNX Labs and today I wanted to showcase a small trick uh, that I figured out while doing the color sensor video uh, last time. If you haven't, then take a look on the screen. Uh, we have put a link to the video uh, and it's also available in the comments below or actually I should say the description below. Uh, what we realized while working with the Spike Prime uh, robot that is uh, created using the base kit and the expansion kit with the large wheels is that the position of the color sensor is not ideal uh, in fact uh, one it is uh, it is mounted a little bit too low than even what the lego documentation says the lego documentation says it should be at least 1.6 uh, centimeters uh, uh, ahead of the surface that it's trying to measure and it's about like less than a centimeter uh, from the surface in the way it's mounted originally and the second which we realized while we were trying to do our uh, PID algorithm with the color sensor is that it's not mounted in the correct location as in it is too far away from the wheels so the PID algorithm doesn't work very well. You have to move the sensor much 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 closer or in fact as close to the wheels as possible for the uh, PID algorithm to work properly. So uh, that time around, just to showcase the uh, showcase the model, we actually or showcase the algorithm. We just used tape and tape the uh, sensor in the appropriate location that we thought. Uh, but later, we decided that we would create a small tip uh, video to showcase how you can mount your video correctly. So without further ado, let's take a look at the uh, take a look at the uh, new way of doing this thing. All right. So switching cameras over here. This is the Lego Spike Prime robot over here and uh, this is the top view and if we turn it over then you can see and i have only shown one of the color sensors over here and you can see actually i have replaced this with a uh, this this thing called a cookie i think when I mean, they are now in the informal language they are called the cookie kind of pieces they have these are like super useful pieces from the spy crime kit uh, they have a holes on the front on the sides uh, like you no know, so like, you can change direction with these really easily so anyway so let's put it away from the side for a second and look at this so this is where the color sensor is mounted and if you look at it from the side you can see the the edge of the color sensor right there is barely like a centimeter away right this is where the this is where the color sensor is uh, sorry this is the where the caster is and this is where the color sensor is so one it needs to move quite a bit up in fact uh, we had created a uh, like we had attempted and showcased in our video that you could mount the color sensor from here so that would give it a bit bit of lift like almost here uh, these are the two two ones that are showing so you would uh, almost your color sensor's face would be here, so that would give the sufficient lift. But it's still not in the correct location because your color sensor should ideally be mounted somewhere over here, right? Very very close to the place where the wheels are being driven. The wheels are being driven right here. You can see the motor, the edge of the motor, and that's pretty much obviously the center of the uh, the wheel. So this is where it should be mounted. So uh, this requires messing around with the robot a little bit. And once uh, I have noticed, like you know, once the kids have uh, or students have mess, uh, have uh, built a robot, they are a little bit uh, not super happy about changing it. So we wanted to give a step of easily accessible uh, steps that you could use to uh, take the color sensor out the first first time uh, because it is mounted in a little bit rigid manner. Uh, not only is the color sensor actually working as the color sensor, in fact, it's also providing a little bit of structural stability to the robot. And so we really need to uh, take care of about how to remove it. Otherwise, you will have a broken robot in your hand and you may need to start from scratch, which is uh, quite painful. So, first of all, uh, this is what you need to do. You see these Lego stud bricks? Uh, well, they are put here so that you could also attach the Lego stud kind of blocks. So, uh, the first thing you need to do is take this one out. Right, so take this one out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this thing over here, this piece over here. So now you have uh, essentially this block is out all by itself. I'm going to put it to the side and you can see these two things are sticking out actually, right? These two are axle holes. Make sure that the axle holes retain their plus shape position in the 90 degree shape. If you actually end up twisting this, then this will again not go back because the shapes in this one are fixed and they are plus shape. So let's put it over here and they are about the same. Now, once you got that done, there is this L beam that's actually holding on to this I beam, which is connected to this caster. So you need to take this L beam out. And that is a bit of a work because as you can see, they have like four connectors, four pegs. One here, one here, one here, one here. Four black pegs that are actually holding this on. And let's take it very, very gently out. And we are lucky that all four of them are left in uh, into the robot as part of this thing. So one, two, three, and four. All four of them are left there. So now what this does is like, you know, this opens up the L beam to be removed because this L beam was actually covering this section of the robot and connecting to the rest of the robot body. So it was impossible to take this out. So once you got that done, uh, this piece over here, this this is actually an axle uh, 
looks like an axle, but it's actually axle on one side and a peg on one side, a two length peg actually. So it is holding on this black beam to the rest of the I beam. So what we're going to do is we are going to pull it gently out until you see this red portion over here. This has to completely disengage from the I beam and there. Now you see the red is completely gone and this I beam is connected. If it's not easy to see there, a little bit easier. Now once all that is done, this should just come off. You see it's, it's like you now loosely connected. And the way this is connected is uh, these, this beam actually I should show uh, over here and it'll become clear in one second. We, it looks like an H beam. Uh, it has H kind of shape. So we're going to take it out and show it to you. That comes off. So we're going to take this off and be gentle with the robot. Like you know, don't try to pull too hard. Uh, gently, gently, gently pry it open. So this came off and you can see this is part of the H beam that's over there. Uh, you can see it better now. There are two holes over here, two of these pegs going out on the other side and the two others are going on the other side. So let's try and take it out so we can take the color sensor out. So if we take this thing out, now the color sensor is just held there uh, from two beams at the surface. So the color sensor is held there coming from two beams at the top. So you can see like it is the color sensor is really well connected or really well established in the body of the robot and it's allowing you to connect this uh, like you know, the I beam, it's allowing you to connect this H beam. Uh, and a bunch of other pieces so it's very hard to take it out without breaking the robot we had to struggle with it a bit so now this is pretty straightforward and all you can do is just pull this out gently let's gently 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 and there this comes out so disconnect the robot here and take this thing out right and the question is uh, now we have a bunch of pieces uh, this is what actually came out of the robot and we have a color sensor over here. Now we need to replace. The easiest way to do this thing is, uh, by the way, tighten things wherever they are loose a little bit. The easiest way to do this one is by using a cookie uh, kind of beam over here. And this will allow you to just uh, simply like, you know, um, put the robot back as it was without having too much trouble. And I have a showcase how to do this on the other side. And what you're going to do is like, you know, uh, let's do this one. First take the cookie kind of beam and attach this, this thing over here. So now this is done properly, right? And with this, now we can actually go ahead and just place it exactly the way the color sensor was done, which is to put like you know, these two holes, sorry, showcasing a little bit harder. These two holes over here will actually go inside these uh, um, blue uh, pegs that are like, you know, three length long. They're two length on one side and one length on one side. So this connects over here. Now we are back to pretty much the original shape and we can rebuild exactly the same way as we had disconnected. So which means this, uh, the I beam now needs to go back uh, to where it was. You see there is a, this is where the I beam was connected over here. So remember, we can't put it like this because the one axle came and connected the I beam, the second was in the, in the back. So let's take this one and there. Remember the middle holes, the edge of the middle holes is the one that actually goes in here. So connect it back. This is in the correct place and just push it down. So now, this is somewhat rigid and cannot come out because this peg is now connecting it. And on the other side, uh, this, this H beam actually over here connected to the cookie beam. Uh, someday we are gonna have instructions for this, but today this is quick and dirty, so let's get it done. And finally, you need to put, uh, finally you need to put the L beam over here, there, done. And the last thing to make it pretty again, remember, make sure that these things are actually perfectly 90 degrees, uh, like you know, they're perfectly done, there. And now we have a robot that looks exactly as it was uh, before, except that at the bottom we don't have color sensors. We have these, uh, we will just keep calling them cookie technique beams because uh, that seems like pretty appropriate name. So now we have our color sensor free and it actually needs to go over here. So let me showcase where we would ideally like it to be. We'd like it to go in here and we'd like it to be flush with the surface. See, I mean, this is, this is where we would ideally like to be. It should not be actually be sticking out this should be completely flush. You can see it over here, like flush. This is where we would want, and actually we would want two sensors because two sensors are quite useful when you have one line that you're following. Let's say this is the color sensor that's following and you have one line going this way and the second line uh, coming over here. So the second color sensor can come and uh, touch this line or go overlap this line. And then you can say, oh, now I have one line that I was following. The second line is the indicator line saying this is where you should stop. There are quite a few lines on the replay board that actually do work like that. So how do we put it, right? This was a bit of a conundrum. There is a plenty of space here, so that's not a problem. I was just not sure how to place it here neatly without uh, without too much problem because there is this this literally just fits in perfectly. There is no space for me to connect it to these frames. But after a while of finagling, what I realized was you can actually take this frame out.
completely. Let's try this thing out there. This thing just comes off. I mean, it's black, so it's a bit harder to see, but you can see there are pegs over here, right? One, two, three, and four in the four corners. And this thing is just connected. So uh, now what you can do is like, now you have access to all this space in the center, right? That you can use for whatever reasons you want. So what I decided was, uh, I'm gonna showcase first the piece and then I'm gonna dismantle it and build it for you. Like, uh, you can actually, what I decided was, you can simply create a piece that actually connects it to these frames in the, uh, via these two holes and then this can plug back in. So essentially what you want is something like this. Uh, let's place it here. The pegs face upwards and this actually goes right here. This, this is the way we wanted it, right? This is the inside, which actually connects to the robot body and this is the outside. Okay, so if you look at it is, again, we are using one of the cookie beams. They are super easy to use. Uh, and this is literally what we did. Let me disconnect it and show it to you. There. So we took a cookie beam and we put a, uh, I'll take this one out so it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, one second, oops. There, and it's easy enough to see. We put four pegs on the four sides, right, on the sides. One black peg, two black peg, three black peg, four peg. And then we took a, uh, a blue peg, and these usually have a stop here on the one, uh, like these are three length, but uh, they have stop at the one length, so we put it over here. And then we needed to fill one uh, height, like you know, one unit of height with something. And sometimes you can find Technic beams that are exactly one length long, but they are pretty rare because they are in general used only as spacers, so they're not that useful, and you may not have it in your kit, and there's really no point purchasing it uh, separately. You can use one of these connectors. These are like, you know, uh, axle and, uh, and peg connectors, and they're quite common in, in most kits. You can even purchase it on BrickLink and recover for very, very cheap. So you just place these ones over here. So, and then uh, what you can do is like, you know, once this is done, we are going to be connecting it like this over here. Right? This is the inside. We're going to be connecting it over here. And then we are going to be placing the color sensor facing this way, so the color sensor is facing down. So anyway, so once we have created it here, make sure the uh, blue pegs are facing down, and then you take the color sensor and look at the sides that have the holes. So these are the holes, you can see it clearly here, and take it and connect it. Okay, one on this side, and the second color sensor on the other side. There you go. So now you have your color sensor connected in a pretty nice configuration, right? I mean, they are, and you can make these things uh, a bit vertical if you want. Uh, you can finagle and put them perfectly at the end. And finally, uh, see, make sure this is the inside. So this goes towards the robot. And of course, they have to face away from the robot. So now we are placing them right on these pegs, one, one blue peg and second blue peg on top, of, on top of these holes over here that come from the frame. There, and boom. These things are completely flush. See, like you know, there is nothing sticking out. They look perfect. And the wires are going in. Wires you can route as you want but uh, this is now available for you so take this one in i'm just gonna place the wires a little bit like well very nearly because uh, you can always uh, mess around with them as you want uh, go in wires one goes there and the second one goes over there okay so the wires one of them are up here the second one up there there and once that is done uh, it is pretty straightforward then right i mean just uh, take one let me make sure no wires sticking out there, there, and there. On one side and on the other side. And there you have it. These are the wheels and these are the color sensors very, very close to wheels. This is the this is where the wheel center is there. And this is where the wheel, uh, like, you know, it's, it's like barely like, I would say, less than an inch from the wheels. And it works very, very well for color sensing. Uh, line following as well as uh, line squaring or stopping uh, like you know following a line stopping So that's what uh, this this week's video was like you no know, very easy a uh, way to move these things from in here And the other thing that this actually does is now your robot is like your current sensors are under the body of the robot So very little in terms of uh, very little in terms of the um, Light can actually get to them, which is exactly what we want with our color sensors We don't want our color sensors to have any extraneous lights because as you can see, uh, well actually it's a little bit harder to see because we haven't plugged the sensor, but uh, let's plug the sensors in. Uh, let me plug this one in and give it a second. And not sure it's that easy to see, but you can see this is like flickering, right? This is actually throwing the light. So the color sensors already produce all the light that they need. So they don't, they don't need any extraneous light. So once you position them under the chassis of the, uh, chassis of the robot, 
you can you can like you know you, you don't have any have to worry too much about extra shielding this is pretty much the perfect location if you are going to use the robot uh, as is from the lego then uh not a bad idea to just uh use this use our design and uh with that i'll be stopping our video here thank you for watching and good luck with the competition see you next time around uh please uh, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with us uh we would love to get in touch with you thank you for watching